I didn't plan to do this. <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to see how this morning goes because my notes are long. I promise I will not keep you past lunch because I don't want to miss lunch. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, I just feel like I should share this. Um, Doug talking about me not, me not liking religion. Um, I just want to share my testimony real quick. I'll try to do the short version. I grew up in a family um, that was Mennonite. So not like we're not talking Mennonite like there's a Mennonite church here that they look pretty normal. <laughs> I grew up in a Mennonite home where nobody looks normal. Like if you've ever seen them, you know. It's a very it's almost Amish, right? So it's the in fact the Amish broke off of the Mennonites and the Mennonites um, had the still have the Holdman Mennonites as the branch. They have a black cap. They wear dresses all the time, not the men. <laughs> the men all look normal for some odd reason. Um, that's a whole other topic that I will leave alone. Um, but so, um, no jewelry, no makeup, no hair dye, long hair put back in a cap. So I share that because, look at me. <laughs> Ooh, I just, I love how free I get to be even though I'm a Christ follower, cool. right? Yeah. Like, so many people feel like, well, if I'm going to follow God, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to look weird, I'm going to act weird, I'm going to be different. Yeah, I hope so. But I hope it's different in a delightful, expressive, amazing way. And so um, I just really love the freedom that I've found, the privilege of being a Christ follower and not having to be so bothered. Um, even we left the church when I was like 10, but even all through my high school years, you know, it was required of me by my own guilt and shame. It was required of me to read a chapter of my Bible every night. And I would do that diligently, which swell. But when you're doing it with this motive of I have to do this in order to please God, it's not a great thing. Right? Like, it becomes so much bondage. And we would get home from basketball games, and it would be, you know, midnight. And I was like, well, can't go to sleep because I have to read my Bible. And so I would. And it just created such, it, w it was an oppression, which is what religion means anyway, right? To, to pull people into a, a bondage. Um, so I just, I'm so thankful that I can now read a chapter of my Bible every night and do it because I want to. I don't, but I do read my Bible consistently. And I just love that I get to do that because I want to, that I get to do that because I'm free to. But it isn't about me um, maintaining some <coughs> rules in order to please God, right? So it's not only is there this outline of rules for me of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, and you must do this, do this, do this. No. There is complete freedom because every single sin has been paid for. And every single, you know, place where I miss it has been paid for. God loves me completely. Jesus covered it all. With Jesus, everything is paid for. Right? Everything is paid for. It's one of our tenets of fusion. Like, that's one of our columns of truth. Jesus paid for everything. So, Even yeah. when I forgot to read my Bible, he paid for them, and it's okay. <laughs> and he still loves me, and he still wants time with me, right? Amen. I cannot tell you how good God is and how good Jesus is. I wish my English language had the right words and the right ability to express how great and how amazing God is. And I'm, I feel like I want to share this because I feel like maybe there are some here who don't, who haven't tasted God this way. And so I just, I want you to know, he's so good and he's so kind and he's so loving and I cannot describe his greatness, oh. right? So now, and today we're gonna talk about some things that we should do, but, but I want you to keep in mind, these are things that we should do in order for the improvement of our lives and the lives of those around us. This isn't about rules and regulations that we need to maintain, but this is about who we are. And that's what I really want you to gather this morning, is who we are. Yeah. Every single one of you. Um, I teach, uh, and I, I, 
when in, when in motion is training leaders, we have IMLT, in motion leadership training. So I teach there and I teach our leaders about being leaders and what that looks like and what that looks like under grace. You know, when you have teams that are <laughs> either not aware of grace or not aware of God or, and we do, like we have teams go on mission trips that there are people who have not even heard the good news and been saved. So we're teaching leaders then how to deal with sometimes very difficult people. So what was on my heart today was I want to teach you guys a little bit of what I teach there. Because here's the thing. Every single person in this room is a leader. Amen. Every single person in this room is an influencer. Yes. We have a purpose and a destination. And I'm telling every single one of you, whether you feel like you are or not, whether you feel old enough or wise enough or just straight up smart enough, whether you feel like you just have no answer, I don't care. Because what God says is that we are leaders. Amen. That we're called intentional and with a purpose. And so I want to encourage you about your leadership, about your influence. Because every <coughs> single one of you is that. From the youngest to the oldest. Okay? Alright. Um, I watched recently, in fact, what was it? <coughs> when was that? Friday. Friday, Friday afternoon. Um, Megan and I went to Denver and we watched um, McFarland. Have you heard about this movie? Okay, I'll just give you the general idea. This movie is this guy, his coach, he does not do well. He swears at his team and he throws things at them and he gets fired everywhere he goes. So he ends up going to McFarland, California, which is this town which is mostly made up of prisons and um, people who are out in the fields picking. That's kind of the gist of the whole, like that's the town, right? Really, really rough town. A uh, very strong Hispanic community, and it's just a really rough town. So he gets a job there. It's his only option at this point because he's lost everything else. So he's working with these kids, and these kids are kids who are getting up at 4.30 a.m. They run to the fields to pick, then they leave the field to go to school, and when they're done with school, they run back to the fields to pick some more. And these kids are knowing that my destination is either I'm going to live in these fields and pick and work in these fields, or I'm going to end up in prison. That's my hope. That's what I have to look forward to. So he comes in as a coach, and um, he works with these boys, and he sees their lives, and he starts to involve himself in their lives. He goes out and picks with them. He goes into their homes. He experiences their lives, and he really begins to make a difference. So all he's doing is being a leader, right? He's influencing these guys. And the end of the story is amazing because of what the team of seven young men in this cross-country track team do. The end of that is these seven men, young men go and they come back and they're changing and continuing to change their city and their town. And things look different, things are different. And that's what we're called to do in Greeley. We're called as leaders, we're called as influencers, wherever you are and wherever you work. And whatever you do day to day, you're meant to influence, right? You're meant to make a difference. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about sense of self, which would also be another word for? Sense of self. What do we talk about all the time? Who said that? Identity. Yes. Identity. I just didn't want to use that word because you all know when we talk about identity all the time. So we're changing it up. We're going to talk about a sense of self too. We're going to talk about self-worth as well. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about you as an individual. How you handle life. That's the second point. How you handle life. And third, what is your responsibility and your freedom as a leader, as an influencer, okay? So to, to define sense of self or identity, it is the sense of you, like who you are, and providing the same continuous flow of that person throughout your life, okay? So we're talking about how you would describe yourself and be able to describe yourself that way for the rest of your life, this identity that you carry. And then self-worth, is the sense of one's own value or worth. It's your opinion of yourself. So really, 
Self-worth is this process that starts with identity. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I just want you to feel free to, I, I want this to be back and forth a little bit, okay? So how many of you would say at this point you think you have a really great self-worth? And, you know, I know this is like, wow, <laughs> I'm being asked to proclaim how great I am. Awesome. <laughs> but I really do want to know. I really want to know for those of you who feel like you have this really great sense of self-worth. Raise your hand. Like you're pretty confident. Okay, how about those of you, let's go the other extreme, we're all being honest here, right? So it's okay, we're in this community, in this environment, what happens here stays here. Not really because we're going to go take the gospel out there. But, you know. <laughs> so I want to know, secondly, <clears throat> on the other end of the spectrum, how many of you would say, I don't really even know what my self-worth is, and I don't know if it's very good or not very good. It's kind of, mm. okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Be honest. Okay, so it's important that we know self-worth. If we're going to leave, it's important that we know our self-worth because we have to be able to lead well, okay? If we're going to lead well, we cannot have this low self-worth because what happens is we do everything we can then in order to make ourselves feel good about ourselves. So we begin to do things that are controlling or manipulative. We begin to do things that are really uncomfortable. I'm sorry to say, but in a lot of churches, there's a lot of control and a lot of manipulation that happens because there's not an understanding of who we are. And there's this need to, I have to be right, and I have to prove I'm right. And so then it becomes very self-centered, right? So um, every moral problem that an individual faces, will have its roots in self-centeredness. It is a desire to fulfill my own cravings using my own resources and accessing my own control and power. I don't know if that hits you the way it hits me, but like, ugh. I hate that. And yet, I do that. I see myself doing that. Like, I will do what I need to do to fulfill my cravings using my resources, accessing my control and power. How healthy is that? Everybody, raise your hand if you think that's healthy. <laughs> right, not at all, right? So what happens is we become very independent in the sense of, not in a healthy independence, I'm talking about an independence that I'm independent from God and that I will use my own resources. Thank you very much. I will create my own future. Thank you very much. I will use my own power. Thank you very much. No. No. That is not, but that is how people operate, and that's how people work, if they have no self-worth and have no sense of identity and who they are. Okay? <coughs> so, again, this is about <coughs> us learning. Okay, well, then how do I have self-worth? How do I gain that? How do I understand that more? Now, I want you to know there is a general sense of who you are, just in the Bible. So many scriptures. I wish I brought that list. Um, I think it's a list of about 101 or 102 things that scripture in the New Testament says about you. If you are a Christ follower, you believe in Jesus, there's a list of all these things. Give me some of them. Somebody. Righteousness of God. Child of God. A saint. Ambassador of reconciliation. Perfected forever. Redeemed. Light priesthood. Light what? Royal priesthood. Heir of the kingdom. Called. Soldiers. Sorry? Soldiers. Soldiers. Anointed. Anointed. Kings and queens. Kings and queens. See? Look at this. <laughs> what does 2 Corinthians 5.17 say? Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. And actually the way it would read, if you could read it in Greek, is therefore if any man is in Christ, he has been made and is being made and are becoming a new creation. That verb in there encompasses the whole thing. So, new creation, right? That's one of the things that we are. Um, another thing that we are, uh, you said, 
heirs of the kingdom, ambassadors of righteousness, right? So we have this general sense of who we are and what we are. Scripture tells us all of those things. Then there's the other side of it where we get to hear from God personally about who we are. Now, here's my question. How many of you have ever had a picture, a word, a sensing something from God where you knew you were <coughs> informed who you were, how God sees you? Raise your hand if you've ever had that. Okay, anybody whose hand isn't up, I want you at the end of this. We're going to have fun. It is the best thing. I'm telling you. It is the best thing to get a sense of what God says about you personally. It's awesome to have the scripture and to know this is who I am. But it's a whole other thing entirely to be able to go, oh, that's who I am. So one of the pictures that was given to me that I love, because <laughs> it cracks me up, is um, that I'm a ballerina with a sword. Now, here's what's really funny about that, is I had some ballerina classes. Trust me, that is not pretty. I don't do well with that. You would think that I could handle a little bit of graceful spinning. I can't spin even like I can, but not the way you're supposed to in ballet. So I'm a disaster as a ballerina. So I'm like, well, really? You're going to call me a ballerina. Perfect. But I will take it. You know why I'll take it? Because I get the sword, and I get to play with the sword. And to me, like, I love that. I, I, in fact, there are moments where I'm like, God, please let me use my sword. I just want to use my sword. Please can I use my sword? And often he will give me the words to use in order to use my sword very gently and carefully to just fillet out just one little part that needs taken out of somebody else's life or out of my own, right? So, so cool. So. Afterwards, if you've never experienced hearing from God what he thinks about you, I really want you to have a taste of that because it's so fun. So we'll do that. Um, okay, so uh, my notes look like this. It's a disaster. <laughs> um, okay, so that's just a little bit of who you are. Okay, so secondly, let's talk about how you handle life. Um, what does it look like to handle life? As a Christian who loves God, as somebody who is a follower and who's redeemed from the curse as well as from all the rules, who gets to be free. What does that look like? Okay, so I want you to look at Matthew 7. We're getting to the leadership part in just a minute. We have to be patient a little bit. Okay. Matthew 7, verse 7. You guys, can I just say, this is completely a side note, but I have a squirrel run by me, so I'm going to talk about that squirrel. When we were doing worship this morning, and I get to watch you guys, there is something so, like, it's going to make me cry, something so profound about watching you guys worship. Amen. It is the sweetest thing, Amen. right? Amen. Like there's just something about like all of us together going to the throne room and getting to watch you guys just lay your hearts out before God. There's Amen. nothing sweeter to me than that. Like just being able to see you give yourselves fully and jump into that. Amen. So I just want you to know I love the way you worship and I know God loves it even more, but I love the way you worship. And I love the way you, you jump in. You just yeah. jump in and go for it. And it's awesome. Yeah, okay. Amen. Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Is that a maybe, or is that a promise? That's a promise. It's a promise. Right? If you ask, you receive. If you seek, you find. If you knock, the door will be opened. I'm telling you, sometimes as leaders, you pretend like you know what you're doing when you don't have a clue. That's knocking and watching the door open. That's just you stepping up and going, I'm just going to pretend like I know exactly what I'm doing. I told them, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> 
<laughs> Megan was coaching the middle school basketball girls at Union Colony, and I assisted her. So I told just a couple of them. I didn't tell them all day. <laughs> I told them, listen, I want you guys to pretend like you know what you're doing. Like, pretend like you're Michael Jordan or whoever. I don't care. Pretend. Just pretend like you know exactly what you're doing and you're meant for this and go out there and play the <coughs> out because that's half of it. Knock and the door will be opened. If you don't step, you don't get to see. If you don't knock, you don't get to walk through an open door. Right. If you don't ask, you don't get to have. Right? right? Yeah. There's something about asking and stepping and trying, jumping, right? When you're on that swing and on the playground, right, as a little kid, and then you get to jump off of that swing. Has everybody done that? Please tell me every single person has jumped off the swing. <laughs> Okay. okay, so you know what that feels like, right? That freedom of letting go, and you're just like, ah, in the air. <laughs> How great is that feeling, yeah. right? You don't get that in the kingdom of God, even, if you don't jump. If you don't jump, you don't get to taste that feeling. And I'm telling you, in the kingdom of God, it's more terrifying, and it's more fun than jumping off the swing. So, I'm telling you, as leaders, jump. Walk in like you know what you're doing. Step into it like you know exactly where you're headed and what you're doing, even when you don't. Right? Uh. Pretend. Just pretend. <laughs> okay? It's part of being childlike. Children pretend all the time. Yeah. Okay? So, that's a Matthew 7, 7 and 8. So, it's talking there about influence. If I can ask and have... If I can knock and the door gets opened, if I can seek and find, I have influence, don't I? All of a sudden, if I'm asking God and he's doing what I ask, hmm, I have a little influence somewhere. Yeah. yeah? It's a good thing. Okay, also, Matthew 10. Verse 1. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Amen. Do I get to be a disciple? Gorgeous. Yeah. Am I, am I an heir of the kingdom? Do I get to walk in some authority? Yes. Do you? Yes. Every single one of you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Absolutely. What about all the experiences where you tried it and it didn't work? It's okay. Why is that okay? Because you just keep pressing up. Right. You keep trying, right? The first time you jump out of that swing, like you probably are going barely, right? I can do this. I can do this. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next time you go a little bit higher. And if I jump out of the swing when it's going super high and I completely fall on my face, do I ever jump out of the swing again? Yes. yes. And if you don't, change it. <laughs> Do it again, right? Jump out of the swing again. Even if you fall on your face and you look like a complete idiot, God isn't bothered. When we look like idiots, he's not like, oh my word, my child, I cannot believe it. No, he doesn't do that, right? We fall and he's like, yes. They tried. Did you see that? They tried. Yeah. Right? It's this yeah. great space. Yeah. So, we have influence and we have authority. Matthew 7 and Matthew 10. Now, let's talk about, we're going to switch to the leader part. Um, as leaders, we are called to do great things. If our self-worth, if we don't know that we have influence and we don't know we have authority and we don't know we're a new creation, do you think we're going to lead? No. No. And probably, not only are we not going to lead, if we do try to lead, is it going to be a healthy leadership? No. no. Because what are we going to be trying to do? Demand respect. <laughs> we had a team a leader one time who was like, well, I'm going to demand our respect. And I'm like, well, let's see how that works out. <laughs> people do. I know people do demand respect, and they lead with fear. And I'm not going to tell you fear doesn't work. Sometimes it does. But is that the leadership that God has anointed us with? No. It's 
not the leadership he's given us. It's not the leadership he gave Jesus, right? He gave Jesus this leadership of compassion and love. So we want to lead in that way. So 1 Timothy 4.12, probably most of us might know this. Go there anyway. 1 Timothy 4.12. So I have added a little bit to this verse. I hope nobody's offended. <laughs> I got permission from the big guy because he said it's true. Let no one despise your youth, 